So there's another thing that American in the Western world has made normalized where if you really think about it, a lot of these places outside of America, the whole home buying process is different. It's so different. It's like you don't you if you have two hundred thousand dollars, then you buy a home for two hundred thousand dollars. That's it. No interest. Yes. It it's really how it should be, honestly, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like we normalize buying things that we can't afford. Absolutely. So we put ten percent down or three point five percent down. The lowest we or can one percent down on a home that costs five million dollars, and now we got to pay a mortgage that we can't afford. Absolutely. And it's like that's because we live beyond our means. Yes. That's because we want things that we really can't afford. Mm-hmm. We want bigger. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, why don't you just pay for something that you can afford? Yes, absolutely. But that's never really been taught to us because the mortgage, and even the way that banks work, a lot of these countries, especially on the, the Muslim countries, the banks don't charge interest. Mm-hmm. So the whole way that the banking system is set up is different. It's not really incentivized mm-hmm. for you to take a mortgage. Because when you're taking a mortgage, the bank is w- really winning in this mm-hmm. situation, right? Yeah, of course. So the amount of money that you're going to pay over a 30-year time frame, you could have bought three more houses yes. for the house that you just purchased. Yes, absolutely. So it's like even the way that we look at real estate in America, we have a different mindset. Mm-hmm. We're, tra- we're trained to put ourselves in debt yes. for things that we traditionally can't afford to benefit the bank. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a beautiful way to explain explain it. And that's exactly what's happening. And that's why I really love that. So having a conversation with Americans now, and I'm like, well, if you want a property now, you have to put 50% down. It's like, oh, gut punch. Like, wait, what? What do I, what is, wait, wait. How do I do that? What what in the world just happened? But imagine if we were trained our lives to say, no, you can own a property in seven years. How many more of us will be investors? How many more of us will own real estate free and clear? Because there's no annual property taxes. And make better financial decisions. Yes, exactly. If I know I I need it, then I'm going to put it towards something that's going to actually add value. And so I really love that when they typically go through the financial aspect of what is necessary, they're going to look at your uh, last two years bank statements. That's the maximum that they'll ever do. Sometimes it can be shorter, three to six months. It's really, really capital focused. I can't emphasize that enough. (laughs) Um, But in the scenario where you do get financing, there will be some interest. Um, But again, if you go back to option A and you pay cash, there is no interest. So that's the options that investors have. So it's really, really dope. So you said something, and we saw this as well. There was a lot of cranes. Yeah. Right? So that means there's a lot of development happening. Yes. Which sometimes could lead, and we've seen this happen in Florida, when there's too much property mm-hmm. and the market is oversaturated. Mm-hmm. How do we know when or where we should be focusing? Because you also brought up the mainland and the free zone, mm-hmm. which are two different things. And yes. maybe you can explain that as well. How do we know that, you know what, this market won't be oversaturated in, in the next five to 10 years? Absolutely. I feel like oversaturation is kind of like just a, a mindset thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because imagine if y'all didn't start a podcast because there were hundreds of podcasts. Mm. It's just about what can you provide value for? What makes Dubai unique to the world is a few reasons. One, there's no capital gains tax. There's no income tax. There's no property taxes. We got to slow so, down and say that again. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't breeze over that. So there is no capital gains tax, no income taxes, or any property taxes in Dubai. That alone allows so much cost savings for people that are ultra high net worth individuals. Okay? Yeah. You're talking about the number three safest place to live in the world. So if you have a Bugatti in the U.S. and you have to keep it in your garage, but you really want to drive it, what good is it to have all these things that you can't enjoy? You come to Dubai and use that same money. You can enjoy everything that you, the fruits of your labor. You yeah. can truly relax and enjoy it. Put your it is the underwater. number one most profitable destination for Airbnb. And it is the number one most popular travel destination. It's literally written in their airport. So what Dubai is creating is a safe haven for people who are entrepreneurial. I will also say when it comes to people who have service-based jobs, this is one of the the cons that people may need to also pay attention to that's listening. If you are American and you don't have a specialized skill or you're not an entrepreneur and know how to actually generate income for yourself as a business owner, you're going to struggle in that market. It's not necessarily the place for you to come and say, oh, I'm going to put in all these applications. You have to come over there and have something to give. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of like... a give and take type of society. They allow you to do your thing, but you have to generate income for yourself. Unless you're coming over there, you're like a CEO of Google or something like that. But that middle ground doesn't really exist for Americans because the service-based business there, 
they're able to use uh, Im skilled immigrants. labor. Yeah, they're In able different to, parts of the world. Yeah, different parts of the world, and just the cost of labor is so much lower yeah. than what an American would expect. So you have to be able to generate your own income. Um, but your question, though, as far as which areas uh, are, are really popping. So on the luxury side, you have the Palm, you have the Dubai Marina, which is where I live. I absolutely love it. You know, waking up every day and being able to just see yachts at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, people are just out <laughs> living their best life is so inspiring to me. Um, the other areas I absolutely love, are like downtown Dubai, Maidan City. Um, and then on the lower end, more affordable areas, you have places like the City of Arabia or Emar South or the Mac Hills. And there are so many different areas that you can now invest in. The beautiful part about it is that it's a growing economy. So everything's open. You said something that was important to our heart. i really quick. So the, the free zone, is, is the Palms part of the free zone? How so does that work? That's going to be a part of the... So free zone and mainland is just for people who are looking to start businesses to conduct business. Okay. It's like it allows you territories, essentially, to be gotcha. able to conduct business, to transact. But when it comes to actually investing, you won't actually see a project advertised if you can't, as a foreign investor, purchase it. If it's something that's localized, that's more under wraps. That's not going to be listed for sale. To They actually identify on the listing if it's something that the public can purchase or if it's something an investor can purchase. Gotcha. But when it comes to like all these new developments, those are all for foreign investors. You said something that was, um, I want to get back to, mm -hmm. there's no property tax. Mm -hmm. That's another thing in America is like you technically never really own never your property really because yes. even if you buy it out in cash, yes. um, if you fall behind on your property taxes, mm -hmm. then they can take your property. Absolutely. And that's something that, you know, property taxes, depending on where you live, Ooh. that could be the mortgage right there. Yeah, and not more. to mention, you're not in control of it. It may and, start and it goes up. Number, it goes it up every year. Up. Yeah. It goes up. It goes up, and then you, you know, and then let's also think about the legacy play. We're all here to. We all have children. Well, yes, you do have sons too. So we all want to leave things to our children, and it's like, okay, if they get tired of the property, oftentimes we lose all of the things that we work so hard in the next generation, you know. But in this particular scenario, you leave this to your child in a trust. They're going to keep it forever. So there's no they there's no property tax. There's no property taxes. Yeah. So can, can you correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I was reading. So you said no property tax, mm -hmm. no capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. And you brought up Google, so it made me think there's no corporate tax. There's no corporate tax. But I, I was reading that that might be something that they're looking that, to change. That is something that they are open to changing very soon, within like 2024, 25 ish, yeah. which, you know, they may have a corporate tax. Yeah. I mean, they, they're like, listen now, <laughs> y'all over here making too much money. So I'm thinking <laughs> like, if, if, I'm a, if I'm a corporate, yes. like these enterprises and I come to Dubai, yes. I'm not paying corporate tax. Not even paying corporate for the next tax? Two years. And even what the proposal right now is saying about 9%. Yes. As opposed to the United States, which is 21%. Yes. Yes, it makes that's a, a huge sense. cost saving. So right. even if it's 9%, you're still saving money. Right. And you're living in a place that's safe. And you have all this labor that is a lower expense. You know, it, it just makes sense on so many different levels to at least think about it and have the conversation about why am I not investing or conducting business in this region. Another thing I want to also point out, you mentioned oversaturation mm -hmm. and seeing all these projects. And it's like, okay, well, what are people actually doing with this real estate? You can go to Dubai and you might see buildings that may not seem like there are a lot of people in them. And there's a reason why. It's because people come to Dubai and they don't just purchase one unit. They purchase an entire floor. So you may see a floor in the building <laughs> that looks vacant, but the reason that it is is because it's just something they're either sitting on, somewhere that they're parking their money, you know, or a legacy play where they just bought it for them kids. They bought the floor for them ki their kids. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, Dubai mm -hmm. is part of the UAE, yes. United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. but there's other Emirates. Uh, another Emirate down the road mm -hmm. is Abu Dhabi. Yes. That's where we met. Mm -hmm. So the Abu Dhabi play is interesting because mm -hmm. from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Dubai became so popular because they had the vision for the tourism. Correct. Right. But Abu Dhabi is the real finance capital. Mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi is the real money. Yes. That's, they, they have way more wealth in Abu Dhabi than they have in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And they are obviously, you know, connected, but there's some level of competition as well. Oh, yeah. And Abu Dhabi is trying to catch up to Dubai as far as on the infrastructure and tourism side. Yes. So do you do work in Abu Dhabi and are, what are the opportunities pop? 
for Abu Dhabi? Because it's only an hour away. From it's Dubai. only an hour away. So Dri I don't... Driving an hour. Driving an hour yeah. away, yeah. So I really love Abu Dhabi. I look at them as, I look at Dubai almost as like uh, the black sheep of the, <laughs> of the UAE. It's one of those places where uh, you can go and you can have, like you said, any part of the world at your fingertips. Any experience that you want, you can have in Dubai. When it comes to Abu Dhabi, it is very much more conservative. You know, so the lifestyle shifts. It's like as soon as you drive into Abu Dhabi, it's almost like you feel at peace. You're like, where are the birds? Like, where, where I need sound. Like, it's too perfect. What is going on? So it's really kind of about the vibe that you're going for. Like, I go to Abu Dhabi for relaxation. I go there because I want to make some high net worth connections, you know, but I don't see Abu Dhabi being as tourist friendly, if you will, as Dubai anytime soon, because they still want to keep some of their culture alive. I think when you start to just allow too much to happen, it can kind of overthrow your overarching goal of life, um, which I really do love because we all need those pockets to be able to like decompress and go back to, you know, and so, but they are doing a lot of development. They are much more wealthy um, than Dubai because they are oil focused. Dubai is not oil focused. They are tourism focused mm. um, and, and supply chain focused. So. That is also a misconception about Dubai. It's like they had this oil money. No, they have tourism money. And so that's why they're constantly building, constantly developing. And so the reason I love living there is because I'm a resident, but I get to take advantage of living in a tourist, tourism focused city.